All right. Well, hello, everybody. I hope everyone's having a super fantastic day. Welcome to the Gateway Kids Club Storytelling happening this Saturday. And not just this Saturday, but every other Saturday to follow because we are awesome. Now, we're really happy that you're going to be here. And this is actually a live stream. I've never done this before. So it'll be very exciting. All right. But I'm really happy that all of you are here to figure this out with me. Now, today we're going to be telling a story called The Wombat and the Dragon. Um, it's a story I wrote, but we're not going to be telling it yet. We're just going to wait for a few more friends to perhaps join us. And I also have someone really special here with me today. He's going to help me in whatever way he feels like it or however he's inspired. His name is Cosmo. Um, his Minecraft name is Cosmic Boy. And he's my son. And he's here to help today. And um, I'm really happy that he's here for this first Gateway Kids Club Storytelling live feed. <laughs> All right, so we're just going to hang out a little bit. Um, I guess, I don't know what the protocol is. I guess if you have comments or questions or like things that will not <laughs> exist, <laughs> I've just been told. So you can love us from afar and maybe um, um, when it's all said and done, you can, you know, go to the Gateway Kids Club kind of Facebook page and say some nice things if you want to. And please subscribe to our channel. Um, this will give you a chance to kind of um, be notified when uh, the next storytellings happen or whatever cool stuff that people have planned for all of you. Hope you guys are staying safe and healthy at home. So as I said, it's going to be casual. We're just kind of hanging out. Imagine this is my um, beautiful brick-walled living room and this is my large gray overhead projector. Do you actually have overhead projectors in school or do you use visualizers? This is kind of old, huh? Yeah. This is an antique, like I am. And um, if you've not seen this before, this is a way of projecting um, onto screen. So in schools, you might use a visualizer if you're in the AVA club, if it's even <laughs> still called that anymore. What are you? Cosmo's an ICT captain, ITC captain. What is it? ICT, is that in the book? Oh, mama, it's an ICT captain. So he knows all about visualizers. I don't know about visualizers. I know about overhead projectors or OHPs. And that's, we're going to be using that later on today as well. Yeah? Okay, so we are more or less ready to start. Once again, it's really casual. I'm going to be telling you the story, The Wombat and the Dragon, which um, I wrote for all of you today. And I hope you enjoy it. You ready, Cosmo? Okay. Now. The winter solstice celebration had come to an end. The dishes were washed, the sparklers extinguished, and Wembelina Wombat. Yes, you. Hello. She lit the last candle for this last night of the long dark. She snuggled down next to her mama and asked, Mama, what happens when the long dark ends? Ooh, well, that's when the dragon is supposed to wake, Mama answered. The mighty dragon, Wembelina responded. <laughs> yes, my little Wembley Wombly, Mama replied, tickling her under the chin. <laughs> <laughs> it's Wembelina, Mama. Wem I'm a big wombat now. All right then, my big wembly wombly. <laughs> Mama. Mama then tucked Wembelina in and gave her a good night kiss. <gasps> Mama, if the dragon is supposed to wake when the long dark ends, why have we never seen it? Oh, that's a long story from a long time ago. Oh, tell me, Mama, tell me. Um, Mama pondered. Oh, please. Wembelina begged. All right. A long story from a long time ago on this longest night of the year. 
And this is how that story went. Cosmo, can you help me hold Rumbelina? I'm gonna use the overhead projector now. <laughs> Now, when the earth was still a child, the two legs and the four legs and the crawlers and the flyers and the swimmers <laughs> this swimmer is a little crazy <laughs> and the swimmers they were all equal they shared the land and the sea and the sky. Taking only what they need and giving what they could. They lived in harmony and all was right and good. Now, the earth and all its creatures were watched over by the mighty dragon who roamed day and night and day. He roamed north to south. He roamed east to west, watching over all the creatures, big and small, maintaining balance and order. Well, surely the dragon would need to rest, you might wonder. And yes, you wondered right, for the mighty dragon did rest, only roaming when the earth was warm and the days were long. But when the earth grew cold and the days grew short, the dragon would rest. I'm trying to find the dragon's resting hole here. Okay, that'll do. <laughs> now the dragon would rest. The dragon would sleep all through the long dark, deep underground, for everything has a season, a cycle, a rhythm, even the mighty dragon. Now, during those long dark days and nights, while the other creatures slept, the two legs talked. They were clever, maybe too clever for their own good. They felt they were better, better than the other creatures they shared the earth with, better than the mighty dragon, maybe. Why do we endure this dark like everyone else? They asked. Why do we use only what we need? They complained. The earth has so much to give. Why don't we take? It is clear that we are better, and because we are better, we are entitled to more. We should have more! And so they agreed that night to take more. They made plans all through the long dark hiding their intentions in the shadows of the night. They 
are clever, maybe too clever for their own good. Now, when the long dark ended, when the sun was born again, when the other creatures began to stir and the mighty dragon walk, the two legs put their plan to action. Each one took enough for two. And when the long dark came again, no creature was the wiser, not even the mighty dragon. <sighs> you see how easy that was? They triumphed. We are indeed better than all the others. They cheered. Better than the mighty dragon! They celebrated. Maybe. The two legs grew bolder, greedier. When the sun was born again, each one took enough for four. Then, enough for eight. Then, enough for 16. And this kept going on. This continued for many seasons. Oh, they were clever. Maybe too clever for their own good. Why do we answer to the mighty dragon? They whispered. Let the earth be ours, they schemed. The next time the dragon sleeps, we will trap it deep underground. We will use the cold to seal it in its resting place. A frozen, icy spell. And keep it there forever. The mighty dragon will no longer roll whenever the sun is born again. And trap it, they did. And this is how it's been since the earth was a child. The mighty dragon sleeping all through the long dark and through the warm days deep underground, beneath our earth, beneath our land, dark, rumbly slumber. The two legs took all that was theirs. And all that wasn't. They turned the trees to monuments. Taller and taller they grew. They colored the skies with smoke, all the shades of gray. They filled the land and water with things they no longer wanted. They were clever, too clever for their own good. But this is not how the dream story ends, no. Because of their actions, the dream story tells of the time the dragon will rise again when the sun's rays kiss the earth and the icy spell is broken and all that is frozen melts. When that time comes, the mighty dragon will rise in a fury, um, 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 reclaiming all that belongs to the earth. And when he is finished, the earth can return to the beginning when things were right and good. And that's the dream story. Yeah, uh, Mama, mm -hmm. will the dragon rise again? Maybe. 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 Now, close your eyes and sleep, my Wembley Wombly because the sun is born again tomorrow. And so she slept. <laughs> As the long dark came to its end, and the sun rose once more on her peaceful home. Now, at school the next day, in their quaint little burrow, where everyone knew everyone, 
Wembelina told all her friends about the dream story her mother had shared about the meaning behind the winter solstice. A blah 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 Never! Her friends laughed. The dragon won't rise again. There's no such thing as a dragon. It's just a story. A dream. Stories, Brayden Butterfly said, fluttering to her. <laughs> and when the time comes, I'll do what I can to help. <laughs> Me too, Wembelina echoed. <laughs> help? <laughs> what can you do? Their friends teased. Will you flutter the dragon away with your delicate wings, Brayden Butterfly? Nice, Wembelina protested. Oh, yeah? Well, what about you, Wembelina Wombat? What does the wombat even do? You're roly and you're poly. What can you do? I, I dig, she answered defiantly. I'm a very good digger. <laughs> you dig. You're roly. And your poly, and you dig. <laughs> hey, everybody, listen to that! Wembelina, the roly poly wombat, is gonna save us from the dragon. Ooh! <laughs> Wembelina had no answer for her chorus of laughing friends. And besides, we're all too little to count. Too little to make a difference, even if we wanted. Too little. And that was the end of that. When Mimbalina went home that afternoon, she told her mama what her friends had said. She was feeling rather sad, oh, as you can imagine. Just a wombat. And a little one at that. I'm roly and I'm poly, and all I do is dig. My friends are right. Ooh. Well, you are just a wombat and a little one at that, Mama comforted. But your friends are wrong. Big things always start as little things. And if you want to make a big difference, you need to start by making a little difference first. Little things are the most important kind of thing. And this was to prove true sooner than Wembelina and her friends could imagine. Now hold. As the sun rose in the sky, and its rays kissed the earth, and the days grew long, things began to change. There was a rumble and a grumble in the earth, because the earth could give no more. The air was hot and heavy, the land dry and sparse, and the ice began to melt. And with that melting, there was a stirring deep underground, beneath our land, dark, rumbly stirring. The mighty dragon, trapped for so long, began to wake and break free, just as the dream stories had told. And break free it did with a mighty fury. Cosmo's gonna be our dragon. Come on, Cosmo. Let me help you with that. Here we go. Okay. Mighty fury, break free! Roar! 
and he burst out of the ground. Oh, the mighty dragon rose up, breathing an angry fire everywhere it went, from north to south, from east to west. The mighty fire raged. At first, no one believed this to be true. Never, they cried. The dragon couldn't have risen again. There's no such thing as a dragon. It's just a story, a dream. But slowly and slowly, the dragon's flames spread until they were licking at the edges of Wembelina's burrow. The fire crackled. Do you want to make the fire crackle, Cosmo? You can use this. And if you have a plastic bag at home, you can make it crackle too. Can you hear it? The fire crackled, and the flames danced orange and red. The fire is here! The fire is here! Everyone cried from, from the biggest of the creatures to the smallest. Save our burrow! Save our homes! And they tried. Everyone tried. Move aside, they said to Wembelina. Out of the way, they commanded. For she was little, too little to help, too little to make a difference. Or so they said. The one thing she was good at was digging. <laughs> and what was the use of that? Soon, the fire grew. Too big for the biggest and bestest creatures to manage. So the biggest and bestest creatures had no choice but to shout, Run! 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 Hide! 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 Save yourselves! Selves! Selves! But where do we hide? The creatures cried. The flames leap high in the sky, and the earth is scorched and burning. Where do we hide? And that was when an idea came to Wembelina Wombat. They could hide underground. She could dig a hole. She was very good at digging and all the creatures could hide there to escape the dragon's fury. But she would need help. Oh yes, someone to help her spread the word about her plan. And that was when another idea came to her. Brave and Butterfly, do you want to be Brave and Butterfly? He could fly from creature to creature, telling them Wembelina's plan. He was small enough to flutter in and out of the flames and above the hot ground. And that's what they did. Brave and Butterfly fluttered from creature to creature, spreading the word. Wembelina's digging a hole. You can hide there. Hide in the hole that Wembelina's dug. And as Brayden spread the message, Wembelina got to work. Tick a tick a tick. Tick a tick a tick. Tick a tick a tick a tick a tick tick tick. And you know what? All of you, you too, Cosmo, you can help. All of you look like you're going to be very good diggers. And I think it's a great idea for you to help Wembelina Wombat save the creatures in the burrow. Can you help? Yeah? You can? Oh, <laughs> well, that's wonderful. All right. All together now, we're going to dig. Are you ready? Yeah? Let's go. Okay. Dig a dig a dig. Dig a dig a dig. Dig a dig a dig a dig a dig 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 again. Dig a dig a dig dig a dig a dig dig a dig a dig a dig a dig dig dig. Last time. Dig a dig a dig dig a dig a dig dig a dig a dig a dig a dig dig dig. And when Wembelina was done, she had dug a hole. Even the biggest, bestest creature would be proud of. And Brayden Butterfly, where is he? He was waiting there. There we go. With everyone else. The entire burrow, big and small. He had done his job and he had done it well. They all went down underground two by two in the hole that Wembelina dug. The burrow was destroyed. 
but all the creatures were safe, thanks to a roly-poly wombat and a little flutter butterfly who helped save the day. Now, did you know that this story, The Wombat and the Dragon, was inspired by true events? During the Australian bushfires, wombats dug deep holes, or burrows as they're called, that animals used as shelters to escape the flames. They also dug deep on the ground to find sources of water that other animals could use as watering holes. And just like Bumbelina Wombat, you can help save the day too, and save the earth, even the smallest of you, because little things are the most important kind of thing. And remember, if you want to make a big difference, you need to start by making a little difference first. And that is the end of our story. <laughs> now, I hope you enjoyed yourself. As I mentioned, we're going to be having storytellings every... Good night, Wembelina. <laughs> every Saturday at various times. Um, please share with your friends if you enjoyed our story. Tell your mommy and your daddy and your papa and your kong kong and your auntie and your uncles and everybody you know. Now, uh, Gateway is a nonprofit organization, so um, please donate to Gateway if you can, um, so that uh, Gateway can continue to make this kind of a thing free for all of you. Um, also, subscribe to our channel. Because if you subscribe to the channel and like, you'd be able to get notifications. I believe they always say, press the bell. Press the bell. <laughs> so that you can find out about when uh, Gateway has other cool stuff for all of you to do. I hope all of you are um, listening to the social distancing, staying home, staying healthy, and keeping busy. Because even though you're at home, there's still lots of amazing things that you can get up to. All right, Cosmo. Do you want to say bye-bye to everybody? Bye-bye, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. everyone, and thank you for joining us today. Mwah! 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 It's a bubble wrap head. That's what I do on Saturdays. <laughs>